All right. So welcome to today's topic. We are diving into really virtual ride-alongs. What is virtual ride-alongs with each sales reps? So you can double your sales percentage. So we, I've had the pleasure of, of interviewing Chuck and a couple of other of our webinar series um, for the last calendar year here. And, and we touched on in the last one we talked about, we talked about this new technology that's revolutionizing the way you can um, have accountability for your sales team. So um, Chuck, I'm super excited that you joined us here today. Um, but if you can, first and foremost, just tell us a little about yourself and Top Rep, um, what you guys are doing. So uh, I've been doing uh, home improvement for about 20 years in sales. I've been a sales manager of some of the largest organizations and largest sales teams uh, in the country. Um, and when we when we jump into what Top Rep is, um, I got out of a lot of the larger organizations so that I can start this boot camp. I've been speaking in so many different uh, organizations as well as the sales platforms that are around the United States and, and actually around the country. And what we found when me and Jim got together, what we found is there are so many different missing pieces and parts, uh, mainly with the implementation of the sales training. So we went ahead and we made Top Rep. And once we made Top Rep, we only made it so that we could have maybe one, uh, one event a year. And over the last two years, we're going to be on to our sixth event right now. Uh, we keep getting pushed and pushed and pushed. We'll sell out. And then we have to make another, uh, another program or another event. And so Top Rep is from A to Z sales training, everything you get to take home, uh, all the manuals and everything. And once you get back, uh, you have everything you need to put that that and use that as an implementation. So that's really what Top Rep is. It's A to Z sales for all home improvement, uh, whether you're selling baths, windows, roofing, whatever. Uh, so that's really what what Top Rep is. And that's awesome. So and I, I did uh, check before um, in, in one of our emails or maybe it was LinkedIn. I, I was scouring through and I saw photos of you from like 15, 20 years ago, speaking at events and all that kind of stuff here too. Yeah. So you've aged well, um, I have to say. So I, um, I appreciate that. My wife would probably <laughs> not say that, but <laughs> so no, thank you so much for joining us um, today and talking through this. So let's let's dive in. So let's uh, let's go through Copilot and what that is. So we you briefly touched on it and like speak peak the interest of my me as well as many other people on the last webinar here about this co-pilot technology that you're implementing um, and doing. And then we just tell us about co-pilot and what that is. First of all, I really appreciate you letting me mention that on one of the last uh, podcasts. We just mentioning it, we had so many different messages and, and emails come through. We got a lot of people signed up for it. And the biggest thing that keeps going back is this is crazy. I mean, it's it's either scary or crazy what this <laughs> software can do. And this isn't new. Um, I've had my eye on this for probably about 10 years. And I, there are so many others out there. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. That one doesn't work. This one here, it's just, it's just recording yourself and you can listen back. And really, that's not what I'm looking for until we found Copilot. Uh, we found the, the software company that's doing this, and it was actually out of a whole different um, genre, I guess, a whole different trade that they were using this for. And we found the AI, the, the, uh, the intelligence inside of this software that when the sales rep goes in, it knows when they're in the house, it starts to record them, and you can choose whether it's going to just record the rep or it records the rep and the homeowner. There are some companies that are like, I don't think I can record the homeowner. Well, you can choose not to record the homeowner if you like, but uh, it does it does get hard when you can't hear the other side. But what this software does is it analyzes the entire appointment so that when the rep comes back out to the car and they turn off the, the program or the app, it analyzes everything within minutes and not only do they get a breakdown of it, so does the sales manager. And then if you're going through the co-pilot program, so does the coach. So I actually get, you know, the breakdown of it as well. So if I'm working with that company, I could jump in and say, hey, Jackie did a great job. 
not only did Jackie do a great job right here, I think Jackie did a, an amazing job and we need to take that snippet out and put it in the library so that during our next sales meeting, we can play and say, guys, this is Jackie in the home and this is what she's doing. Cause you, we've all been in sales meetings, right? Where we're, it's like the, the uh, locker room talk. This is what I do. And when you actually listen, like, no, you don't, you don't do any of that. Oh, yeah. And so yep. now we can not only show these, the, the reps that yes, you know, Jackie does it, but this is what the, the reaction was from the homeowner. Cause when we say this in sales meetings, you only get the Hollywood version. Man, I told that guy, and it's like, well, you did, but you actually told it in a different way, and this was the reaction. It was still a favorable reaction, but the tone of voice is the magic behind the presentation that they were giving. And so that, that Rilla, uh, the, uh, the, the program itself breaks everything down to words per minute. You can find out just from a top rep to a, a standard rep or a rep that just coming in where the uh, words per minute from the top rep are consistent. You know, they, uh, they, and then when you look at a rep that is newer and the, the uh, words per minute speed up because of the, the nervousness and the, 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 all the butterflies in their stomach, they want to get it out really quick or they're just regurgitating a script. Yeah. It's like, hey, we want you to do the script, but we want you to do it in such a way that it comes off genuine. And so it analyzes everything with that appointment. Yeah. Well, I think the interesting thing is, is just to kind of back up and give some context here is like oh, the, the ride alongs that are currently being done in the traditional sales organization is being done for what? Two reasons. One for like training. And then one for like, crap, there's something wrong. We should go and do some retraining and find out what the heck's going on. And in both situations, it, it can kind of create an awkward, like you, you're not with another person, you know, you have to go learn alongside someone else, hear someone else, how they do it from a ride along with initial training. And then you to do it yourself, you're still, you have backup on that, that sales call. And, but then you go out on your own, you're solely on your own. And then you tell that sales manager what went wrong or what went right. And you're just relaying a bunch of, you know, trying to remember how you did it and how you said they had no context there. So there's, there's not any like recording of how it actually went down. You're just, it's kind of hearsay. And then you go, well, I did that. I, I followed all the script. I followed all the rules, but yet, and you go, well, you must not have because you're not performing. You're not getting the same. So you do the ride along, which makes this kind of awkward. You know, now you're, you know, someone could follow the same script, you know, and, and actually come across different. So how is this technology now kind of changing the way people train initially? And let's just park there and then we'll go into the retraining side of things. So how does that yeah. change like the initial training and initial like off board onboarding to even them doing, doing it themselves? So during the training, what's really, really cool with the program is you have all these recordings and say, hey, I'm going to show you that this is what you have to say. But mm -hmm. before you do that, I want you to hear what it sounds like actually when it's in the house. Yeah. So you can actually see instead of I'm going to send you out on all these ride alongs so that you can get the, the feel of what's going on. I'm still going to do that, but we can do this together and I can pause it. Say, did you hear what the, the, the rep just said there? And did you hear what the homeowner's reaction to that? That is going to be the typical reaction. And you better be ready for it. You know, yeah. those are, those, you could do so many things with this. And, and so the, it's like money ball, you know, it's the easiest way to explain this is when you look at the, or watch that movie money ball and they took an average team and won the pennant, an average team. And I mean, you can take all of your top producers and what I mean by top producers, these guys that are up and down, up and down, and they're roller coasters, and take them out of the equation. You take your very consistent reps, and you can see those consistent reps through all your KPIs and, and the rest of the numbers, and, and slide them in with more uh, appointments, and you're going to see a steady incline rather than this, and then it comes back down. We're trying to figure out what's going on, but you can also moneyball it by understanding how it's being done in the house. Mm -hmm. If you see and hear and understand why is something so successful and you're listening to 
uh, a sales rep that uses weak language, kind of, sort of, I should have, you know, and it's going to count those. I, I was just watching one uh, about 20 minutes ago, and it was 23 of the, uh, the, the weak language uh, uh, annotations. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, I seen that as soon as it came up and I can click on it and it gave me little pointers right to where all those are. And I could send messages right to that, that rep. And this rep is all the way in Miami, Florida. I'm in Dayton, Ohio. That rep is Miami, Florida. And I'm like, hey, you know, uh, Carlos, you know, you're using a lot of, of weak language. If you're using weak language, then the homeowner sees you as weak. We need to understand this. We got to get rid of that language. And then here's, here's what I would rather use instead. And me as his coach, he can get better twice as fast than me saying, okay, well, I think that you might be doing this. And, and from what yeah. you're telling me, it could be that. Yeah, well, I just I, it brings me back to my first like you know I, I was I learned the Dave Yoho sales process system and I like was we 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 had a uh, a vacant house at the time that we like role played through it and like that's necessary to like role play through it and to like you know you have another sales rep there at being the you know you know homeowner that's asking all the you know correct objections and the exact or you know w- order in which that they you know like scripted. But it was, it was, you know, like that, that's helpful for the initial training side of things. But, but just you, you were talking about having those recordings of like real life instances of going like, let's, let's pull up the library of what objections you're going to run into. And, and let's pull up like how, how we do an intro and how we you know do a needs analysis and how we actually do this stuff really well and what, what's good and what's, you know, what we avoid. Like you can show that by pulling out a library, which is like, that's, that's crazy to be able to have an on-demand library of stuff that's doing really, really well. Um, because often the, the hard thing about it is even with ride-alongs, it's, it's not the natural, like I'm the only person there. It's, you know, it's still this, you know, you have another person with you and it can be helpful, but um, you know, to maximize everyone's effort, I think this, you know, the audio recordings are, are just huge. So how does this impact the retraining? And you kind of talked about that here too, even like your message to the, the, the rep in, in Miami. Um, so let's, we got a, we have an underperformer. Someone's just not hitting their KPIs on, uh, on the appointments that they need to. How do you one kind of find out that there's, there's something wrong, that there's the trigger that there's something wrong other than the KPI. And then, um, and then secondarily, like, how do you, how do you react to that? Um, so we have to have that positive reinforcement, especially yeah. with this program. You can't say, hey, you're doing everything wrong. That yeah. is not going to work. He's that that rep is no longer going to say, OK, record me. You know, yeah. you're going to be fighting for that rep to actually record himself. So it has to be very positive reinforcement. Hey, I see that you're doing a lot of things right. But right here, you can you'll notice that you give up a little bit too soon. If you would have just said this, if you would have just gone into the roadmap, I promise you, you would have, your chances of winning would have gone up exponentially. When you come in tomorrow, let's work on that. And then I want you to go back into the next house. And I really want to see you working on that roadmap. So those types of things, because when, when a sales rep calls you and say, hey, man, I don't know why I didn't close that. What did you do this? Yeah, I did all that. Yeah, I did all that. And I'm sure every sales manager out there right now is like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. Yeah. We yeah. all hear it as sales manager. Yeah, I did all that. Yep. Well, and so and I, it, it's not about beaming on them. It's not about beating them down and like, man, for whatever reason, you never want to do that. I mean, yeah, you have to be very positive towards it. Well, and I think that's the that's the uh, at least the fear that you get in any organization is you just like if you sit there and all you're doing is developing you know, and you're giving like the, well, it looks like you didn't do that right in that one. Like you could have improved it. Yes, you closed the sale, but you could have improved these four spots or, you know, you didn't get that one. So let me tell you, you know, your cycle, you're analyzing too much, right? So like you have to, it's the positive to the negative ratio. Like how do you one get reps to kind of buy in to, um, this is self-development, but it's also inviting like their coach or, you know, their leader to, kind of mentor them in a way like that, like it's the frame that you put around this whole situation of like, 
we're going to record you for what reason? And why should I let you into my conversation? So you could just point out all the things I did wrong. Um, so that's, you know, it's the thing of the healthy, like assurance that a sales rep normally has. They don't, you know, they also think that they're the best thing out there and uh, will give that answer most of the time of that. I did everything right. I don't know. They just didn't want to buy. It's like, to be have very that careful control. with their ego. Yeah. You got to be careful because yeah. a sales rep, that's all they've got is their ego. When they go into a house, they're getting beat down as it is. They don't need their sales manager beating on them too. So it's it, when we go through and find out, especially if it is a top rep, that can be very touchy. Uh, you, sometimes you might let a thing slide because you're like, ah, you know, if I, if I bring this up, there may be a discussion that we don't want to have right now. And he's got two more appointments coming. So maybe I'll, I'll wait on this and, and I'll send that message later on tonight, or I'm going to maybe just let this one slide. Um, so you do have to be careful of that. But when you want to get the sales rep buy-in, it has to be in their best interest. This can't be because uh, this is what, you know, instead of me doing a bunch of ride alongs, I'm going to do this. Um, Cause they're going to see it as big brother watching and nobody's ever looked at the term big brother watching and said, Oh my gosh, thank goodness. You know, yeah. So, I mean, that we have to be saying, we're doing this for you. We're making sure when you, when we want you to go out and, and record yourself, when, when big speakers want to find out what they're doing right and doing wrong, they record themselves. That's, that's what we want to do here is we want to continue to increase the game so that we can increase our numbers and shorten that, that learning curve. If we can shorten your learning curve, you can be the best rep in the area twice as fast, I promise you. And so that is telling them it's all about you. This, all these recordings are for you. We're going to be listening yep. to them. And if it's really, really good, we're going to let the other uh, sales reps listen to it so that we can put you, you know, out there and say, hey, we want you to do it like Sean does it. Well, yeah, and I think it's framing it in their their benefit, right? Um, this is their benefit to do this, you know, at the end of the day, just like you said, I think if you, especially those top reps, they go, you know, it's like, well, now you have big brother listening to my, my ride alongs here. It's like, you have to be careful about how you frame it to make sure that it's like, this is, this is all framed for your benefit, whether it's, you know, to help close it, your personal closing rates, not you know, and pull out your best practices. So we know, you know, we can pass things along to the other, you know, people on the team. So I think that's all, uh, all portion of it. So the other aspect of this is just kind of accountability. So one of the things that we, you know, I, I think we're, we're coming from this COVID years here where like leads have been abundant and you just send the sales reps out there. But one thing that has, has decreased overall is this whole, you know, number of sales and net sales from the gross leads. And in part of that, there's, you know, it's like there's more shoppers out there. Sure. You know, they, you know, more people had more time to go at least research home improvements. That might have been part of it. But the other thing is where abundance comes, so does waste. And that's for sales reps on commission. They go, well, I've got two more appointments today. And I'm going to keep moving. So how do you use this uh, for accountability as well to make sure that every sales rep is actually maximizing each, you know, presentation and going through the full presentation? Because up to this point, they could come tell us they gave a pre full presentation and price, but they could have spent, you know, 30 minutes determined at the door that this isn't a buyer and, you know, wrote them an estimate quick and we'll, we walked out. Um, so how, how are companies using it that way or are they at all? So there are a lot of companies using it that way for, um, I'm, I'm going to get a little ahead of myself. We're just about there. We're not there yet, but we are just about ready to, uh, uh marry engage and this program engage being the, the presentation platform. So now you have an audio and a visual to go back to and see. And yep. so now, and you also have all the analytics that will, will share each other inside that. That is, uh, that's all but done right now. And uh, so that's coming inside of the co-pilot program inside of Top Rep. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're going to be looking for the, a lot of the other, uh, the other uh, APIs that we can, we can bring into this so that there are other apps that we can, whether it's company cam or some of these others that again, we can share in and look at what's being done, when is it being done, how's it being done. 
Uh, the other piece of this is how long are you in the house? What is your average time in the house? I have one person on my own team and he's always in the house for about two hours. And then I have another one and it's still another top rep, but they might be in the, out, in the house for maybe an hour. And so I don't need quite as, as, uh, as many, or I can, I can give an extra appointment to this person over here, or maybe the one that's in the, in there for two, three hours, you know, maybe they want to listen to what's going on with the rep that's only in for an hour to find out yeah. what is it are you doing? Are you telling your life story to everybody you meet? Yeah. What's going on? Maybe you're just easy to talk to and everybody wants to talk to you. We don't know, yeah. but we can find out. Uh, yeah. We can also find out, what, you know, how often does the the sales rep talk and how often does the, the, the homeowner talk? That is my favorite part of this. Yeah. It's like, really, dude, you amazing. at some point, uh, Sean, you got to shut up, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let the homeowner talk, you know, so that's stuff that they can see themselves. The sales manager doesn't even need to bring that up. Uh, yeah. We actually train the sales rep. When you get out, look at these analytics and just do the, the what we call the quick spot, which is what they can look at right away. They can see that they talk 70 percent of the time. It's like, oh, my gosh, man, I got to get better at this. And I, the sales manager, did not have to tell them that, you know. So there's a lot that we're able to do uh, inside of, of the analytics itself. Hello, everyone. I'm the, the ghost in the background that moderates normally. I'm not normally a front facing person whatsoever, uh, but looks like Sean's having some Wi-Fi difficulties, right? And that's part of live webinars and what happens at times. Right. And, uh, I have a having fun on things <laughs> then, right? So, you know, when, when it comes to uh, top rep and, and the program itself, so yep. you can come out to top rep and go through the entire top rep program. And whether you've gone through the program or not, co-pilot is for everybody. Uh, and yeah. so it's for the typical sales organization, all the way through people that have gone through top rep and, and the organization wants to make sure that everybody's training continues through top rep right. and it can, it can track you both ways. And so once you go through top rep and you're, you come back and you keep rolling with your uh, sales reps and you have them in with the co-pilot program, you're going to have me as the coach uh, every now and again, Jim Johnson will get in and he'll take a look at a lot of the recordings as well. And not only are we coaching the sales manager on how to look at this. So if you went with any of these other programs or because the company that we use is called Rilla, we always have them so everybody can see them. But uh, the company we use is called Rilla. If you, even if you go straight through Rilla, you don't have the coaching. You know, you have the program and they'll help you through it. But we're going to help the uh, sales manager understand how to look at it, as well as the owner and the sales rep, how they're going to look at this so that it's going to continue to benefit them. So, I mean, it's awesome. it's very, very well rounded, very well uh, attended. Um, there's one other piece that I really enjoy is if we as when they come into the uh, co-pilot program, it costs the same as if they went straight through the uh the the app itself exactly the same but yet you get three times the benefit because they might there might be a top rep in houston and you might be in florida and you're like man how else can i do this well you can see that the top rep there in houston how he did it in the house yeah you know, you're not going to see where he's from you know but you can hear a lot about what he's doing how he's doing it and therefore, we can share with other top reps, um, you know, how it's being done in the house. Um, now, some people may look at this because, you know, we get the, the uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, some people may look at it and say, well, what if I'm a competitor? We can block the competitors. You know, if we know that, that mm -hmm. you compete with a guy just down the street and they're also on it, we can block them from, some, from seeing or hearing it. So there's, a, there's so much we can do. And the flexibility we have and who you can see, who you can't see or who can't see you um, and your reps. But you can see, you know, a lot of what's going on in the in that uh, community, if you will. So, Chuck, I mean, that as far as the your program with with Copilot, I'm, I'm hearing you say that you get not only access to your own files and what is best practices, but you're getting the whole kind of uh, community 
out there as well yeah. that Apple is doing. Uh, that's right. I mean, that alone is priceless. Just to go, you know, spy on what people are doing over in in California or in Kentucky, you know, like to find best practices for your own organization. Um, one of the questions I had for you, um, it was just talking about like the, you know, with this technology, does this change kind of the the type of person that you hire? Um, you know, from like a, a self development type thing and framing a new hire, you know, you're, you're creating a, a whole uh, library of, of content, but you're also saying, Hey, we're, we're going to ride along with you and help improve upon what you do. So we're not going to leave you out to dry. not going to like teach you a bunch of stuff and say, go, we're going to sit there and like help and guide you after every presentation to do that. Is that change any way that you initially train or initially even hire the type of person? It, um, it does change the way that we train slightly. Um, the way that we train is through video anyway. So while we're going through that video, we can mix in a lot of the audio while I'm talking through the video uh, or we, as I'm training, because we don't just train with videos. Uh, we'll use the video, say, hey, I want you to watch this video tonight. And during training tomorrow, we're going to cover it. We never just say, hey, this is like Walmart. I'm going to sit you at this table and I want you to stare at the screen. Uh, but, uh, you know, we will bring in that audio so that they can hear it. It's very important because it's one thing for me to, to give you the script and what you're supposed to say and how you're supposed to say it. But it's a whole different thing when they get to see um, customers that are going to interrupt you the whole time, uh, that they're not listening, that they come up with certain uh, certain uh, objections, you know, and how we're going to deal with that. It's easy for when I say, hey, when you get, I need to think about it. Or when you get, um, let's just say, um, I need to talk to my dad. And I'm just, and I can, it's easy for me to say, Sean, this is how you say it. Like, oh, I totally understand. Let's get your dad on the, on the phone. Oh, we can't get your dad on the phone. Oh, well, I mean, hypothetically, let's just say that we, you got to get this thing done in the next three months. How do you personally feel about spending $10,223? Oh, that's a lot of money. You know, and that's one thing to say that to a new rep. It's another thing to say, I want you to listen to this clip. And uh, now that you've heard me say it, I want you to hear how it typically goes in the house. And um, and so they actually understand, OK, now I understand more about why I'm doing this rather than why would somebody say they need to talk to their dad? Yeah. Well, and yeah, it's hypothetical versus actually seeing it in practice. And, yeah. and, any, and always in real life, I think the again, it's one thing to role play it or run the one thing to talk about it. And I can like hear it actually happen in someone else's true response. So um, does this in, in regards to like the hiring um, aspect of things is, is it do you feel like it so far, obviously, Coil Pilot's pretty new overall, is it easier to hire someone with an expectation that they're going to be using the app and recording versus a long term rep who's been with you for a long period of time? going like, hey, we've got this new piece of cool technology that's going to help improve what you do. You're already really good, but we're going to use this. So it's I, definitely easier uh, with a new rep coming in. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely easier when when they the fact of the matter is, if you're going to join our organization, you're going to download this app and you're going to use it. Someone that's been with us for a couple of years, that's a little harder. Yeah. And uh, and there has been some organizations where I've had to get involved. And say, hey, guys, I want you to know that this is this will not be used in any malicious way whatsoever. Again, they think, oh, my gosh, you know, the, the sales manager is going to hang over me like a cloud. And, you know, we have to coach the sales manager. There's going to be times when you're going to want to attack your sales rep in the middle. You haven't even heard it come out all the way. And you're already your blood's boiling and you have to step away. Yeah. You know, well, I, I feel it, like it almost creates a, it creates a whole new like. Again, it's all about the you know trust in the sales leader that you have at the end of the day. And like as a sales leader, it kind of creates a whole new aspect of things of how you address all these issues that you know you're probably going to see way more transparently. You are going to see more transparently than them coming back to the office and going, "I did everything right." You know, it's going like you know, like well, you, you are going to see all the things that they did wrong you know, as well as the things they did right. So you have to make sure you're celebrating both and how do you address all those things they didn't do right, you know, um, in a good way. So I love I, these companies that it was hard to get started. 
Um, there's a company in, uh, in uh, Strasbourg, PA, that, I mean, they fought it tooth and nail. I mean, their sales manager was new and they were being attacked about this new software. And I got involved and they're like, all right, you know, if, if Chuck says it's OK, then, you know, yeah, that's you know, we'll, let's give it a try. And they started very slowly. I mean, they wouldn't record the, the homeowner. It was just them. And, 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 and so once they got into it, now it's like, OK, now we want to hear the homeowner. It's fun now. They think it's the greatest thing that they've ever put into their business at this point. But before it's something new, it's something that, hey, we this has changed. This is this is big brother watching. This is and we just had to get past that before, you know, it, they absolutely think this is the greatest thing they've ever done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's yeah, the adoption is. Uh, yeah. I, I assume if you get some younger reps using it that have been, and they you kind of get the it, hopefully you get the whole organization in there, um, you know, to use the same uh technology yeah. and all that stuff so a couple of just like specific questions about the app uh itself and and feel free again if you have questions on this stuff here too please put them in the chat um but like so the rep has to initiate the recording do are you disclosing to the homeowner that you're recording that, that you know for training purposes or do you is that required that is the number one question we get and <laughs> so there are a number of states that require it and what we do is we send out a uh, text message that just says, hey, you know, we're looking forward to come out and seeing you. And, and it's nothing more than if you were to call and say, hey, you're, you're, this, quality can, this call can be recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. We do the same thing. We say the appointment could be recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. We've been doing this on thousands of recordings and not one homeowner has, has even asked about it. Yeah. Um, now I'm sure that if somebody, if a, if a company decided that they were going to use that recording against a homeowner, that oh, would yeah. be a problem. So you have to know that you cannot do that. Um, but there are a number of States like Ohio that we don't have to disclose any of it. Um, cause yeah. we're not using it for the homeowner whatsoever. We're not losing, using it for, Hey, did, did, uh, the homeowner tell us a color? I mean, we're, we're really not using it for that. I mean, I guess you could, but you're not. So, I mean, it's, it's strictly for the training. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what color they, they told, and I didn't write it down on the contract. And uh, shoot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think making sure it is a sales training tool. It's not like a, a tool to be able to understand and, and go back and correct the, you know, and hold a homeowner hostage against they pick, you know, a different siding color or an issue on that side of things. Um no, I think that's that's huge. I think this technology overall is just it's so fascinating to see how technology can help a a business kind of move that sales organization to not only accountability uh, within each appointment, but I think it, it it's one thing how much effort and energy and money companies invest into their sales training on a regular basis on an annual basis. Um, and I feel like this tool is just a way to be able to make sure it. it it actually comes to fruition. Like you can teach and train and invest in your, in your people. This is just a way to be able to go like, is it actually working? Um, and I think that's just a huge valuable asset across the board um, to, to determine um, at the end of the day, what what's working and what's not working across the, the board, not only for your company, but I think the cool thing about the co-pilot program is you get that access to the whole thing of what's working, not what's not working across the board. Um, right. And not only ha having um, an internal team to be able to cycle and you know, analyze every call, but having a coach do that too is even you know, additional benefit to that. So, Chuck, how can people learn more about Copilot? Reach out to you guys, understand what what you know all the ins and outs of it costs and so forth. The easiest way is to uh, get involved with uh, Top Rep on Facebook and then ask us the questions in there. Also, send us the uh, get into our direct messages and ask us about it there because we have not gotten the page right now. We typically sell it inside of Top Rep events. Uh, we just opened it up for uh, the, the public itself. And so the, but the easiest way is on, on Facebook. Join us on Top Rep uh, High Performance Sales Training, and then you can ask the questions in there as well as uh, talk to us through our, our messaging. And either myself, Jim, or one of the others 
uh, we'll get right back with you. You can also, I mean, my name's Chuck Toki. You can uh, direct message me right there on Facebook or LinkedIn, and I'll get right back with you. Awesome. That sounds good. And, and Chuck, I, I appreciate your time and your insight and your expertise and just taking the time out for all of us today. Um, and, uh, and just you know, your words of wisdom here too. It's, it's always, always an honor to be able to, to chat with you and just learn, uh, from you and what you guys are doing over there. So super excited, highly recommend, uh, people check out the top rep, uh, here as well. Uh, but yes, thank you all. That concludes our, our webinar here for you today.